Hi, I'm Kristen. Today I'm going to talk about nine ways you can save money buying your quilting fabric. Um, so seven of the ways are online and two are kind of offline. So um, stick around and we'll start going through them. Okay, so if you've been around the channel a little while, you might have seen a few of my eBay hauls. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to buy fabric. So that's the first one on the list, but um, it's not the only way I buy fabric. So I do have um, quite a few other ways to go through. So um, I've got videos about um, buying denim, because um, uh, I do denim quilts as well as uh, regular cotton quilting quilts. Um, but I've also bought fabric strips that are similar to sort of jelly rolls. Um, I, the ones that um, I think a lot of quilters would be more interested in is sort of what I buy like a bundle of um, someone's leftovers from like their own quilting project. So I'll try and splice in a little video here of um, the most recent one that I bought, which was this huge box of sort of gray fabrics to different patterns. Um, and there was a, actually an image on, even on the eBay listing of the sort of quilt she'd made too with this, but she still had this leftover fabric. So um, she, she was getting rid of it. So obviously you can get it more cheaply. So what I wanna do is put up on the screen over here, um, some of the different terms that I search. Um, I'm in the UK, uh, so I filter to the UK when I'm uh, searching. But um, when I forget to do that, there's so much good stuff in the US on eBay. So if you, because obviously there's more quilters and there's more quilt shops. <laughs> so if you are in the US, which I think a lot of you are, um, eBay is definitely uh, still gonna work for you. In fact, it might work even better than it works for me. So I tend to search things like fabric remnants, fabric offcuts, quilting scraps, um, quilting fabric, cotton fabric, just like all the, it's, it's about kind of, the keywords so the more words you use and the more things you try the more you're gonna uncover some hidden gem where someone's called it something slightly differently and other people aren't seeing it and therefore it's selling kind of cheaply um, and I tend to search with ending soonest um, but I guess if you're searching because I just want to you know you get a, a clearer idea of what the price is that way because um, you know if you're seeing something and it's six days out from when the closing of the auction is because um, obviously on eBay, you're, some things are buying now, but when it's some, uh, someone reselling their own fabric stash, it's usually an auction uh, format. And so then um, it might say 99p or 99 pence uh, or dollar or whatever if you're in the US. But if it's six days out, that's not going to be the price. But if it's like two and a half minutes or two hours before the listing ends, then you kind of know it's only going to jump so much. So it's more, it's easier for you to budget and go, um, is that really something I could buy? Um, so that's uh, that's how I do it. But obviously, if you're, I like to buy more scrappily probably than some people. So I'm usually not buying for a particular project. Um, it's more kind of looking for things I like. Um, so that might be uh, if you don't like buying like that, then you might want to just. Um, search and be watching lots of different items that are like the color if you're just looking for red or something and then uh, just keep an eye on them and um, obviously bid closer to the time um, but a couple misconceptions I guess about eBay um, so it isn't all just like little people's bitty scraps and stuff that's no good um, I've also bought um, people getting rid of like meters of fabrics I recently bought three meters of um, shirting cotton uh, fabric which is perfectly fine for quilting um, and people often uh, you know have things that are just a little bit bigger um, that they're just not using or they're de-stashing so um, although you'll see me do eBay hauls of bolt ends and uh, scraps and things that look kind of oddly cut um, you can get bigger pieces of fabric on there as well so if that's the way you work and you don't like buying small amounts eBay can still be uh, a good one for you Okay, method number two that I have for um, buying quilting fabric cheaply is another online one. So this one is Facebook Fabric Destash Groups. So these usually are not um, purely quilting cotton devoted. So you'll find a lot of garment sewers in these groups as well. So you gotta watch what the fabric is that they're selling, whether or not it's suitable for your project. But basically if you go on Facebook and you search Fabric Destash, Fabric Sale kind of thing, um, 
and you can usually find a group that's in your so I'm in a couple groups that are UK based so I'm sure that there are American ones um, and it's basically folk going on and trying to as it says on the tin de-stash and sell some of the stuff that they don't need now you will find in those groups that there's also sellers um, so f like um, folk who have online fabric shops or even sometimes um, actual fabric shops and they're trying to sell um, in that group which is fine and sometimes you can get a good deal but if you're specifically looking to only buy um, other people's secondhand fabric you know if it's not for so, so for some of you watching this it'll be about buying the fabric cheaply and for some it's about trying to buy less new fabric and just using what's already kind of out there so um, if that's something that you're concerned about then you kind of have to watch who's the seller and all that but e either way you can definitely get good deals on those destash groups and you'll also find um, sometimes they're selling um, unused patterns usually those are for clothing or bags and things like that um, notions threads uh, obviously be careful about old threads <laughs> not always in great condition but um, but yeah so that's another great place to look for um, bargain fabric finds so this next one is one I have not actually shopped on myself because I'm in the UK but if you're in the US there's this really cool website um, called feel good fibers I'll put the link in the description uh, so I heard about it on a podcast and then I looked it up and I was like oh I wish this was in the UK but it's not but it's it's basically um, just a really specific you know buy sell swap website for fabric so it's like if you had an eBay specifically for fabric kind of thing um, although I don't know if there's the auction thing involved I think it just might be a price and you just um, buy and agree it but anyway um, so a great way to sort of offload your fabric if you've got bits that you're not using and it's just cluttering up your space, but also a great place to look um, to buy cheap fabric if you're in the US. And uh, if you can get on that website and find something cool, I'm gonna be so jealous. <laughs> so have fun with that one. Okay, uh, I know some quilters um, buying their fabric online or secondhand from other folk, they feel like that's being disloyal to small quilt shops. Um, I think all the fabric has to come from somewhere but um, anyways uh, you can still save money and buy from your local quilt shop so most quilt shops will have a section either on online on their website or if you go into the shop for remnants bolt ends uh, some of them do scrap bags um, you know because when you're cutting the fabric to to sell it in the fat quarters or half meters or yards or whatever it is where you are um, they'll often end up with a bit that they can't that is doesn't fit into one of those uh, units that they typically sell so they might put it in a scrap bag or they might put it um, just in a bolt it call it a bolt end or a bail end uh, so I've, I've shown you a video on that uh, previously a haul of kind of uh, remnants and bolt ends uh, and some quilt shops also do um, like in order to clear fabric that's not selling as well as they would like it to they'll do sort of a lucky dip clearance kind of thing I've bought that a few times um, from a few shops here in the UK um, so sometimes it could be like a fat quarter lucky dip or ha where I'm half meter lucky dip I guess half yard in the States or something um, so obviously you have to look around see if the the shops that are near you do that but um, that can be a good option especially if like me you don't mind sewing a bit scrappy and just having so I like to have smaller bits of lots of colors and patterns so I can use it in different things um, so even if I'm following someone's written pattern I would often do it a bit scrappy anyway so that's why I love shopping like that so it's not just just like to clear up a, a, a preconception that you might be having it's not just like um, prints that nobody wants that end up in the scrap bags because I've also bought um, scrap bags of solid like good quality cotton solid fabric it's just they're in smaller pieces that um, you know if you're buying for a pattern it's not going to be for a lot of people it's not going to be that useful but for me and for other sort of scrappy quilters um, it's exactly what we want <laughs> so um, yeah so it's not always just like the novelty prints and things like that. You can get um, sort of modern uh, fabrics as well that way. If you want to support your quilt shop but you don't 
you either can't afford or you don't want to buy meters and fat quarter bundles and things like that that's another way you can kind of do both at the same time uh, another way that you can support um, smaller uh, fabric seller type businesses so whether it's a quilt shop or it's another type of a small online business is Etsy so um, a lot of quilt shops will sell on Etsy so if you're not local to any good quilt shops but that's still how you want to buy your fabric um, then you can usually find them uh, sell out quite a few on Etsy and they will again if you're wanting to shop the way that I do for um, scrap bags and lucky dips and things like that um, they'll there'll be listings, specific listings that they'll have in their Etsy shops for that as well. Um, and so if you're on Etsy, you're not always, but um, largely you're probably a small business. So um, you can get the sort of feel good from buying from a small business as well. Um, and I've had, I've had some really good buys from there. And uh, in fact, I've bought some, often the postage doesn't work internationally, but for a few shops I've found I've been able to buy from some American uh, quilt shops that had like um, low volume scrap bags and things like that. I love low volume fabrics and it's not that we don't know what that term is here, but it just seems to be you're less likely to find it in a scrap bag or a lucky dip here in the UK. I don't know. I guess they know that <laughs> they know everyone's looking for it. So they, they put the mark up on. So I bought a few of those um, that have been really cool similar to the sort of scrap bags um, from quilt shops and small small sellers and things like that is the Moda scrap bags and um, Ruby Star Society scrap so like scrap bags from the fabric companies themselves the fabric manufacturers themselves um, so you can often buy those through local quilt shops but you can also get them on uh, I'm sure you can buy them on the Moda website for the Moda scrap bags um, and those can be those are like uh, the motor scrap bags I've done reviews before. Usually it's a lucky dip. Sometimes if you buy on Etsy or eBay or something, people will show you the one they've got and you can buy a specific one. But it's basically like a roll, almost like a jelly roll, except it's uh, the strips are a bit thinner and they're not always as uniform. And um, they've often got the salvage edge in them, but they're usually all from one fabric line. So you get a lot of that. So if you do strip quilts, or anything like uh, with smaller bits where you don't mind that the strips are thinner. Um, I, I love them. Uh, so I made my first, my first ever quilt was made with a Moda uh, scrap bag and I've used them in lots of different projects as well. Um, so those are the two that I know do scrap bags like that in rolls like that is Moda and Ruby Star. So you can kind of search for those. Um, there might be other ones. Uh, if you know of others, let me know. I'd love to start looking for them. So um, yeah, leave it in the comments if you've heard of other uh, fabric companies that do sort of uh, scrap bags like that. Another online place that I look is um, Deadstock Fabric website. So if you just search Deadstock Fabric, and um, for me, I would search UK on that. If you're in the US, you probably don't need to add anything because most of the things that come up will probably be in the US. So Deadstock is kind of um, the fabric that um, often is, I think it's a term that comes from the fashion industry. So it's often sort of the fabric that they, they print so much to make that year's line of um, clothing. And then um, they've so made all of that and sold all of that. And then they've got this dead stock of fabric that they don't need anymore. Um, but it's, it's not just uh, fashion fabric. So you, it'd be, you can also find um, quilting cotton on a lot of these websites um, or other um, types of fabric that might be used in that you can use in quilting like linen and um, denim and chambray and all these kind of things um, so uh, and and usually that's there's a limited quantity so they don't have they they, they often will have meters or yards and yards of it um, but only so many it's like it's gonna run out because it's a like a dead stock <laughs> I don't know how else to say it um, but it's not, yeah, it wouldn't necessarily, those websites might not necessarily come up in an online search for quilt shop or quilting cotton. You kind of have to look for um, the sites that say they sell dead stock fabric. And then within that, look in their menu and see, or their, or their uh, search bar inside the website to see if you can find some fabric that you can use for your quilting. But, um, you know, often this fabric usually is at a discount. So um, if you, again, like to buy larger quantities for things like quilt backs or for patterns 
uh, that might be a good option for you. It takes a little bit more searching, but um, I've had some good luck here and there with that. Okay, an offline um, option, which I think most people know about, but um, just as a reminder, is that you can have a look in your local thrift store, or in the UK we call them charity shops. Um, the one near me actually does have a section for like knitting supplies and fabric and stuff, um, so occasionally I'll find something there. Um, but most, well, a lot of thrift shop and charity shops probably don't have like just fab, like cut fabric <laughs> um, for you to buy. So it's more about getting creative with things like sheets, duvet covers, tablecloths, um, you know, obviously checking either by feeling it because you know, or by looking at the label, what it's made of, um, and trying to think what else could this be. And you can obviously um, get good bargains doing that and if you like working with vintage fabrics or vintage prints that can be a great way to save money. Obviously the cheapest way to get fabric is free so, <laughs> so um, if you are into repurposing, reusing and upcycling other types of what they call reclaimed fabric um, so either from clothing or similar to what you might buy in a, in a thrift store like a duvet cover or tablecloth or sheets um, then obviously family and friends who are just sorting out their own homes would be a good place for you to um, have a look for fabric you can use for your quilting. So if you have no budget to buy, I know this was the video was called places to buy fabric on, but um, you know, you know, if you have um, folk around who um, would be generous enough to give you their old jeans for a denim quilt or um, sheets and pillowcases and towels even. So I've used um, tow old towels for batting in several of my first quilts um, and I'm, I'm not opposed to doing it again. They've held up fine. Um, so especially if you have like a great big bath sheet and you're doing like a baby quilt, that can be perfect. Like you don't need to spend a lot of money on batting for every project. Um, I also know people who use old blankets as batting um, if you're looking for a summary quilt, people use sort of flannel sheets inside for batting. So whether you're chucking thrift shop or just getting donations from family and friends, um, that's definitely another way to go. And the last way um, is just um, if you are keen on supporting quilt shops and you just are watching this because you really have a budget issue, um, but you would really like to buy fabric, you know, in the regular cuts of fat quarters and yards and all the rest of it then just join the newsletter for the quilting shops that you're interested in or that sell the kind of fabrics that you like because they often have flash sales um, or promotional sales and you might find you can get a bargain um, that you weren't aware of since I've joined my quilt guild where we have like a whatsapp group and there's a woman on there and she's constantly putting on <laughs> all the quilt sales that she hears about online and so uh, everybody gets tempted to buy all of this um, cheap fabric because there always seems to be something. There was even like a sporting game. Was it rugby or football? I can't remember. I don't watch either. But um, anyway, it was some big game here um, between England and Wales. And uh, for the two hours that the match was on, there was a, there was like something like a 20% or a 30% off um online store sale like so just get on people's newsletters uh, and if you're just looking for bargains um, then that can be a fun way to um, just keep abreast of what's what's around so I hope uh, even if you're um, already a seasoned bargain hunter that you found uh, a few new things to Google and check out um, from this list um, and let me know if it helped you find any fabric bargains and what you made with them. Um, I'd love to hear about it. And if you want to hear, see more videos like this, um, then do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for spending time with me.